It's a new year and it's a new me. Except for that whole Lexan thing, that's still happening. <laughs> Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 27 of What's on the Bench Weekly. And if you are not familiar with this show, it's where I take you through projects that I'm working on. What's on the bench? New stuff that's come out. New techniques that I may have picked up along the way. All kinds of things happen on this show, and I appreciate you watching. And if you are enjoying this show, Please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. This is a weekly show. It happens every single week. That's why we call it What's on the Bench Weekly. This is the 27th episode, and in this episode, I'm sort of trying to wrap up a few things that I didn't get to by the end of the year. Trying to start 2023 with a clean slate. If that's something you are also doing, put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback. And I try to answer as many of them as I can. Anyway, let's get to the first project. Here is the Tamiya M08 Concept Chassis. This is a on-road car because I'm going to be doing some racing. I'm not a racer by any means. I'm not even very much good at competition in general, but I am going with the intent to have fun. The M08 is a great on-road chassis. It's rear wheel drive. Uh, mid-mounted motor and a pretty popular chassis uh, from what I gather at the local carpet track which I will be taking this to. Uh, it's not a Tamiya body though, this is a body from Exotech. It is uh, the Stuttgart body, uh, meant to look very similar to a Porsche, which it obviously does. I went ahead and painted it in the uh, Pink Pig livery, or a, a reasonable facsimile of that livery. Uh, this, is a pretty uh, this is a pretty iconic livery. It's been featured a lot in the past, and as recently as um, sort of a uh, homage on a Ken Block car. And uh, my deepest condolences to Ken Block's family for his uh, untimely passing. Not something that I think any of us were ready for. And... Uh, Certainly something that hit me pretty hard. I've done a lot of uh, Hoonigan or uh, Ken Block themed vehicles over the years. In fact, another one's going to appear here on the bench here in a moment. And uh, it's a real shame that he passed away. Uh, he left a very long legacy though. Something that I hope people will always come back to. His videos, his style, and his brands have been uh, pretty uh, influential over the years. So all my best. Ken, thank you for all the memories. Moving on with this car, uh, it's all set up and ready to go. I was waiting for a few things. Uh, these are the wheels that come with uh, this kit, but not the tires. There are no tires included. I ended up getting a set of Schumacher tires. These are the Shimizu treaded tires. Uh, and you know they're English because of the writing of tires. <laughs> Uh, but these are for the uh, Tamiya Mini Series. Uh, this is one extra set of mediums that I got from the uh, place that I got these overseas. Uh, these have softs on them now, and uh, they are supposedly quite a good tire, so uh, we're gonna give them a go. I love the tread pattern. It's very unique, as you can see. That is something else. Looks pretty cool. They're not glued on yet, but they will be soon. Uh, let's take a look under the body because there's a lot of uh, things going on there now that the chassis has been completed. This was a fun build, I must say. Uh, not a super complicated one, but uh, apparently quite the chassis. All right, so there it is all set up. Um, running a Hobbywing XR10 uh, Just Stock Zero Timing ESC. Uh, this is meant to be for a spec class stock racing. That's exactly what I'm going to be running this in. Not looking to be competitive. Going to have fun. That's the goal. I've got it set up with my Spectrum uh, DX5 Pro, uh, my favorite radio right now, and uh, running just a, a low profile uh, Amazon servo. I wasn't, uh, wasn't gonna spend a lot of money on a servo for this one. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's set up really nicely. I'm really happy with this chassis. Uh, it's pretty clean for me anyway, um, and uh, hoping that it does reasonably well. I don't think it's gonna be a winner by any means. I don't have the skill for that, but uh, really looking forward to just having some fun on the carpet track. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's the M08 with uh, the pink pig body. 
which I think looks pretty darn good. This paint job was not difficult to do. Um, what I did was paint it on the outside because I like to trade paint. I want people to remember beating me. <laughs> Hence, I painted it on the outside. Uh, I used, um, what did I use? Tamiya makes a pink? Yes, uh, PS, PS11. Uh, and that was sort of where I started. Actually, what I started with was the dark red. I used on point dark red. I sprayed it in a few different lines on the body. And then I took some masking tape that I had cut out and put the dashes all over where the red paint was. Then I painted the whole thing pink and lifted up all of that tape. And then I did some weathering um, just with other spray cans. I used uh, PS Smoke. Uh, I used Pro Tint. Um, I used a little bit of white. Then I went back with the airbrush and some Proline paint to just give it some more subtle weathering like it's been running 24 hours of Le Mans or something. So there you go. Uh, not super difficult. Oh, also did all the panel lines with a Sharpie pen. Because I was like, you know what, let's try that. Let's see if it breaks it up a little bit. And I think it did a pretty decent job. Yeah, nice, fun, easy, good enough for racing paint job. Okay, on to the next thing. Next on the bench, the extremely unwieldy Super Clod Buster. More Tamiya stuff this week. Uh, I actually built this live on New Year's Day. Wait, no, when did I build this? I built this live last Friday, and uh, it only took me four and a half hours from start to finish, including everything except the stickers. So that's pretty good. Considering I'd never built a Clod Buster before in my life, I'm pretty happy with the results. This thing is awesome. It's so big and hilarious and it's just so nostalgic and it's an iconic piece of my past. Not because I had one, but because my cousins had one and I always wanted one ever since I was like 12 years old. Uh, Cause this came out in 1987, I do believe. Uh, at least the body did. Uh, I could be wrong on the dates, but I think that's pretty accurate. Um, and I'm not much of a monster truck guy, but there's something about the Clod Buster that has always appealed to me. I just, I, I can't enough of it. It's just so comical and huge and 80s. <laughs> like, it's just, it's so great. I'm so happy with it. Um, but yeah, the construction of it went really, really well. Um, it comes with everything you need except a steering servo and batteries, of course. Uh, and transmitter, but it's pretty darn awesome. If you have not built a Tamiya monster truck or Clodbuster or Blackfoot or any of those old school lunchbox, whichever one you want to choose, I highly recommend picking one of these up and building it and having some fun with it because these are about as old school as you can get and still actually have some fun with it because you're not going to be afraid to wreck it. But yeah. Such a great build. I was so chuffed when this came together so well. And I really like the, this gray edition that they did. I think it's a nice match. The gray wheels with the gray body and all the black accents and then a nice new sticker pack. It really does shine. I, and the blue, the blue elements. I can't forget about those. They look really good too. Uh, I will definitely get some running footage of this in the coming weeks. Um, probably after the snow melts because it's probably not going to do quite well in the snow. Uh, I am powering it with a Reefs RAW 400 servo. Should be plenty of steering power. It's probably more than it needs. Uh, these poor old bell crank style steering setups, probably not going to be thrilled about that. But um, yeah, I'm really excited about this one. It's like I'm 12 again. It's awesome. That feeling is hard to beat, honestly. All right, Claude Buster. Here's my Traxxas Sledge. And I did a custom paint job uh, celebrating another Hoonigan vehicle, another Ken Block vehicle. And uh, just kind of seemed fitting to show this off today. Um, not much has changed except, of course, for the new Traxxas Sledge light kit. And this is pretty awesome, I do have to say. Somehow Traxxas figured out how to do brake and reverse lights on a brushless motor system for their latest uh, light kit. And this is pretty great. It's it's awesome. It does exactly that. Uh, it's got a nice big light bar in the bumper. It's got a light bar on the roof. And then there's also a rear light bar on the back. And that one's right there. 
it's a pretty great setup. You can run it through your Traxxas Link, uh, or you can just hit the mode button on the uh, controller itself. Uh, they did do some pretty cool stuff here on the light kit itself. Let me take off the body so I can show you that. There's a nice breakaway cable that they built into uh, the unit. So you can just take the whole body off if necessary. And everything is tightly packed into the into the wiring. It's really hard to see because this thing is so big. And there we go. It's really tightly packed. You can see right there. Uh, it integrates nicely into the ESC and um, works amazing. It's perfect. It's awesome. I love it. Always nice to add lights, especially at this time of year because we get so little bright daytime light. A lot of these trucks end up getting run at nighttime or dusk. And when you have a great looking light kit, it just makes it so much easier to see and enjoy. Let's get it fired up here so you can see what it looks like. Keep your eyes on the brake light back there. It's just nice to know when you're hitting the brakes. And then two very bright light bars in the front. Uh, Traxxas does give you two levels of intensity too. So you can have like a sort of a low beam and a high beam intensity, uh, which can be programmed from the mode button on the light controller itself. Just nice to have that. Uh, I think it looks amazing and just adds another level of awesomeness to the already awesome Traxxas sledge. If you're interested in any of the things that I've discussed today, I will put links down below so you can check them out at your leisure. I think that's going to do it though. Another great episode of What's on the Bench. Next week, uh, there's going to be a whole series of stuff on the Red Cat Lowrider because I've got that Lowrider kit and all those parts. I want to start showing some of that off. And in the future, once I get snow again, we're going to do a whole episode about having fun with your RCs in the snow. Be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. See you again next week. <laughs>